and I want to welcome you all to our uh, new presentation tools with PowerPoint in Sway. Uh, this is a session in the series of industry insights that uh, we are offering um, each week on Thursdays. We have a, a one webinar and today's uh, industry insights, we're going to focus on presentation tools uh, because we certainly, all of us, have a lot to sell and a lot to say uh, to uh, our, our organizations as we facilitate some of the technology changes that are upon us. So what I want to do first is just introduce myself. Um, I am Sherry Kappel. I am a member of the Document Lifecycle Evangelist team here at Latera Microsystems. And I'm privileged to uh, do a tremendous amount of work around Office 365 as it relates to uh, the desktop environments and ge next, next generation you all are building uh, as we go forward. And so throughout that process, I have sort of signed myself up to be one of the Office 365 insiders. So I get all of these new features kind of dropped upon me. But even, even so, I don't notice them all right away. And I think that's kind of the adventure of all of this. Uh, so what I want to do is just bring to you all some of the tools I've found very useful um, and some background context about digital storytelling. Digital storytelling is a, a technique and a topic that we've all become a lot more familiar with as our office applications have evolved. If we think back to the slog of slides and bullets uh, of yesteryear, um, it's wonderful to share that we've got new tools that can accelerate and make more visual uh, what we do in telling stories using this presentation medium. There are many new features within that application, and I'm going to share with you a number of them. We are not going to be able to go through them all, which is why we have our item uh, three, uh, resources. We're going to provide you with a series of resources that you too can use um, in your endeavors. And then, of course, we'll have an open Q&A. So let's go ahead and get started. So what exactly is digital storytelling? Um, I know that each of us have a uh, a presenter that we look up to, and one of mine happens to be a, a lady by the name of Nancy Duarte, and we're going to talk about some of her theories and themes and the way she looks at presentations and the way that she looks at digital storytelling, but I think we ought to start with what is it? Um, digital storytelling is uh, more of a multimedia presentation. It's not necessarily just a bunch of pictures without any kind of, you know, like a photo album, for example. It's much more a story. And a story has a structure and it has narrative and it combines elements, media, multimedia elements, multimedia elements, excuse me, uh, in a way that uh, tells the story and frankly enhances it. Um, when it's so many words on a slide or so many bullets on a slide, I'm not certain we really get the story or even get the point. But a digital story done well and combined well makes uh, every message we're trying to get across or every change we're trying to invoke uh, just makes it that much stronger. So with that, the queen of digital storytelling, as I said, to me anyway, is uh, Nancy Duarte. And one of the things that I encourage you all to take a look at, and this is probably a few years old, maybe 2014-ish or something, uh, but Nancy did a TED Talk on the secret structure of great talks. And the presentation is not only just like every other TED Talk, inspiring, but we learn a lot about how we can think about telling a story uh, digital, telling a story, period, but more importantly, how to give a good presentation in digital form. And with that, I'll mention a few key things, uh, what, what Nancy did. She told a very personal story. For her, she wanted to understand why it was when there were uh, personal stories being told on the stage of any presenter she ever watched, why the audience was looking up, they were engaged, but the second that they moved to the slides and they just started reading them, what ended up happening was the entire level of engagement just flatlined. 
And she wanted to understand what was the secret of that. So she set on a personal mission to discover that. In the TED Talk, she tells of the two presentations that she basically used as a sort of way to map out what is a great talk. And she used Martin Luther King's I, I Have a Dream uh, speech. And she also used uh, Steve Jobs' presentation or introduction around the launch of the iPhone. And so with all of that, um, she actually mapped out exactly what is the structure of a great talk. And I kind of snipped a, a clip, let's call it, of, of that TED Talk, and you see it here. Now, in, in fact, there you see her sort of wiping her eyes because she's very passionate about how she demystified this for herself. And, and it really helped her to relate to how you put together the structure of a great presentation. And basically to decode the uh, shape that you all see there, where the, the cursor point is, is frozen there. The way that she decoded it was to realize that someone starts out with a challenge. And what they do is they state the current state of it. Then they basically iterate throughout the talk between here's what it is and why it's hard, and here's what it could be and how it could be great. And then at the end, you notice it's elevated to, this is the transformation we want to achieve. Now, I do want to say that our discussion today is not uh, necessarily a digital story. One day we will, we will indeed bring you one of those. But for right now, I just wanted to explain to you uh, some of the, the, the details around putting together a great digital story. Now, the basic structure she decodes also to be very simple, that it starts out, the story starts out with a likable hero who has a desire or a change they want to invoke. The hero encounters a roadblock and maybe they encounter the roadblock beyond the roadblock, beyond the roadblock. So there's always a, a kind of a conflict in the middle of the story. And then ultimately the hero emerges, not only he or, uh, he or she uh, transformed, but also the audience's opinion of it is transformed as well. And so these are the basics. I encourage you to look at the TED Talk video. It will, it will be very enlightening and inspiring to you as well. So with that, what are some of the new tools that we have in order to deliver some of these these stories and, and uh, also presentations that uh, are new to Office 365. So we're gonna begin by showing, ha, huh, a blank slide. So <laughs> this was intentional because what I wanna do is I wanna show you what happens with a couple of new tools that we have within Office 365. Now, I think I've zoomed this not quite to the way I want to. All right, so there we have our slide. So it's a blank slide, the scariest slide of all. We're going to go ahead and do an insert of some pictures. Now these are four among uh, my many favorite colleagues. These are four of my colleagues. And what I'm gonna do and what I need to do is when I'm building this slide, I actually need to include images of all four of these folks. So I just select them all and I insert them and they pile on top of each other, which of course is not such a great thing. However, I want you to notice, just sort of step back and notice the magic that just happened. Several things happen. First of all, on the design tab, there is a new option here called design ideas. And in recent weeks, Microsoft has enriched the design ideas um, API such that it does uh, so many more things than it did before. So first of all, it knows that these four images have, shall we say, better ways to be designed on the slide. It knows this because the images, it knows the way the face is pointing, it knows the colors in the image, it knows the math of what size they actually are, what number of pixels each of them have, and then it knows how much space it has on the slide to lay it out. But did you all notice when I first did that? Let's kind of, let's go do that again. I want to show you what happens. We're going to go do this again. One of the new aspects of the design ideas 
is that when you insert the images, it automatically puts in alternate text. Do you all see that? A person smiling for the camera. This allows all of the content that you are um, using the design ideas to do and inserting those kinds of objects. It automatically assigns alternate text for accessibility reasons. So if you want to dictate to the computer, show me you know, this slide or show me that image or show me whatever, or even in search, because there's nothing to search in an image for, what happens is automatically when you insert images now, it puts in the alternate text and then based on what it has intelligently determined about those images, it prescribes a number of ways those things could be laid out. Now, this is kind of a marvel, and certainly I could lay this out this way myself. However, it would take me a whole lot longer than that. In addition, I might not have as many options or see as many ways I could adjust it. So here we go, uh, kind of four up, if you will, or something that's a little more interesting like this, even though we would need to fix uh, poor Paul, who's uh, and Jill, who, who we might want to move down a little bit. But my point is, this is called Design Ideas, and it's a new tool within uh, PowerPoint 365. And what I want to make sure you know is that you have to turn it on. And let me show you how that's done. Under File and Options, you're going to go to the General tab, and what you're going to see is right here in the middle, two new groups, one for Office Intelligent Services, one for PowerPoint Designer. Intelligent Services are those enabled APIs I mentioned. They're the things that do the math, that look at the images, that see the direction, find the colors, and give you some prescribed uh, examples of some layouts. One of the things that is really amazing as well is that PowerPoint Designer can run automatically. So I want to show you another really cool thing that it can do. So right here, um, uh, call it against my better design judgment, I am indeed uh, showing you a slide full of bullets. And this is, of course, nowhere near as attractive as it could be. But let's please go through this information really quickly. And then I want to show you how this particular a uh, set of information, this process, let's call it, can be redesigned using design ideas. And in that process, I'll show you a couple of uh, requirements, let's say. So first of all, design ideas in PowerPoint 365 only work if you are connected to the internet. You have to have an internet connection and be logged into your Office 365 account. You equally have to enable the features, just as I showed you under File Options, you can only do this using default themes and default slide layouts of title, or essentially title only, or title and content layouts. Uh, any other really complicated slide layout, it, it won't quite know what to do with it. So these are the two layouts that are truly prescribed for doing this. Uh, equally, I added four of my colleagues. I didn't add you, Steve, because if I had, what would have happened is design ideas would have surfaced no suggestions whatsoever. You can have four images or less. You can have no more. If you have any more, it will tell you there are no suggested design layouts for you. Equally, your images have to be a certain size. And when you do content only slides, such as the one you're looking at here, this really awful drab looking slide full of bullets, when you have content only slides and when they're process based, you, you really do need to um, use the, the, the content slide, the title and content slide. Now, uh, that means don't add any images. Also, what's fantastic about uh, uh, design ideas is that if you are co-authoring a presentation, your design ideals will not work on a slide that has two people on it or more. You have to have only a single editor on a slide or design ideas will not uh, initiate itself, whether automatically or whether not. So again, uh, a good key tip. So let's go ahead, and by the way, this is a reference link to it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this slide again. 
I'm going to go into design ideas. And what I'm going to say to it is, give me some suggestions, please, because this slide layout is really, oh, yes, yeah, so there's a shape. And there we go. I think I have that one. So let's take that out. And then immediately, what do you see? It's working. What it knows is that you have a list of bullets. And so possibly you might want something that is more of a process driven example. Now we could do this in uh, converting it to a smart art image if we wanted, but in essence, what you're seeing here are some other additional recommendations. We're gonna talk about this image here in just a second, but take a look. Here's a, a process list. So it's, it's really taken my slide um, and made it much better. This was the layout that I landed upon. And then of course, later I added in the link and I'm gonna just put this in presenter mode so that you all can see this. Basically, what it did was it picked colors out of my theme. It put those colors onto the slide. And then this right here is another new feature that we have as a design tool. And I need to show this to you because it is very fun. I know many of us have uh, slightly been sad for a number of years when Microsoft took away our clip art from us. We had shapes, we could draw things, we could go out to the web and copy and paste things. But what Microsoft has now added is an entire icons library. So we have people objects, we have commerce objects, we have analytics. And basically what can happen is we can add these things onto a slide, much like I did my um, images, my pictures. And once again, if I have the PowerPoint design ideas turned on automatically, it will generate for me in this right-hand panel a number of examples of how I might lay that out. So again, uh, just to give you a sense of this, uh, it's a really nice way to quickly build uh, slides with imagery or, or Basically, design ideas uses those icons also as an image library when it suggests ideas for you. So again, it's using it in multiple ways. So this was just my earlier example and the design I chose. And then there's Sway. Now, I'm not sure how many of you know of or have used Sway. But what we're gonna do right now is we're going to go into Office 365 on the portal and we're gonna log in. And what I'll do is I'll now launch Sway. There's my Sway. Sway is another tool, again, equally as empowered by the Office Intelligence Services as our PowerPoint design ideas. And what Sway is, to be fair, is it's more of a, yes, it's a digital storytelling medium, but to be fair, it's really a mini movie. It could be really perceived as a mini movie that you can consume on any device. Everything that is generated from a Sway is delivered in uh, delivered into an HTML5 um, uh, design. So that means it's much uh, easier for you to begin um, working with it or on any device. So now what I wanna do, I wanna delete that because I wanna do this over. There are two ways that you can start uh, a Sway. One is you can start from a topic or you can start, uh, well, actually you can three ways. You can create it blank and new from a template maybe, but you could start from a topic or you can start from a document. And that's actually what I wanted to do here. I'm gonna show you how we start from a topic. This happens to be a uh, webinar we delivered just recently about the Changing Lawyer Awards. We're going to be announcing those winners at ILTACON uh, upcoming in a couple of weeks. This is the PowerPoint presentation that the marketing team and I used for that session, for that webinar. And what Sway allows you to do is it can consume files of multiple types, uh, Word documents, for example, PowerPoint presentations. And as long as you have some really good structure in it, it will create these individual cards 
full of information. Now, it doesn't look too interesting right now, but we'll, we'll solve that in just a second. What you'll notice is that there are different card types. So this is a card type that shows the details of your sway. It's a title. Maybe we can add background or add a logo. We can, we can enrich this. We can also emphasize the text and do what we need to. We can equally insert a card in the middle. So I want you to think of cards almost like pages or segments of your overall quote unquote movie. This is just a text card. It has certain features. Uh, it doesn't have other features like for instance, the image card. We can add bullets or focus points, have it zoom in on the image. There are a tremendous number of features here. And then let's see, we have image cards, text cards. Uh, we can also have a card that holds uh, maybe a social media link. We can add cards that are uh, other HTML pages. We can add cards that, that are uh, Twitter feed. So the idea of Sway is it's very dynamic. It is certainly multimedia. Now here is the really cool thing. Just like Nancy said, we can also take this in a view. Well, let me go ahead and play this first of all. There we go. This is what it looks like when we play. In a second, I'll show you that storyline view, which is really nice. But do you all notice it's a very, um, it's much more web-like, uh, even though I made it out of PowerPoint, but this is now consumable on any device. I could publish this out to my website. I could hand you all a link and tell a story. Uh, I can add uh, cards, I can change colors. As a matter of fact, let's go do that. Let's go ahead and say what we wanna do with this is we wanna change the design a bit uh, by choosing different styles. We can make the designs of the cards horizontal. We can make the designs of them as slides. We can make them vertically, uh, scroll vertically. And then similarly, what we can do is we can choose styles and, and colors and the like and then just maybe have it remix it by default. Then when we play this way, obviously we have something that's a little different. Now, this is a really new medium for all of us. And I did, a, I was checking out, you know, what did Microsoft do new to this? And I would say that they've been working at it since 2015 when they released it. I would also say that there's, what, what was it? It was like, 1,490 enhancements that came off the user voice site for what they've done with Sway. And some of the most important ones were being able to edit offline, being able to print, being able to convert it to a PDF. And all of those uh, must have features were indeed added. So if you took a look at Sway at first and you were non thrilled about it, I encourage you to take a look again. Uh, I did want to get back to that storyline view. Um, there was actually a diagram that looked a whole lot like Nancy's here, and I can't seem to be getting back to it right at the moment. Um, but I'll send, I'll put a picture in our slide so and tell you all how to do it. But it's a really neat little, uh, it looks exactly like Nancy's diagram on the different portions of this story. So again, that is Sway. Um, much about it for us to explore. Uh, much about it that can use or reuse content you already have. And so that takes us to um, our questions and answers, Steve. Uh, just really quickly, I wanted to mention what's up next as uh, Steve queues up our questions. Uh, do know that, as I mentioned at the start, we do webinars every Thursday. Uh, the upcoming webinars that we have in August are the importance of updating your software. Uh, that's going to be Jason Vandermeer and Matt Miller on uh, August 9th. And then the following uh, Thursday, we will have Chuck Henrik, my colleague in the evangelist team, delivering a session on the changing lawyer and working efficiently. So Steve, do we have any questions? We do, um, let's see. Uh, first couple ones here are related to um, how great the presentation was, Sherry. That's lots of compliments, which are good. And then um, two people have asked um, if we're going to be sending out the recording. Um, it was a request to tweet it, Sherry. So that's something we could consider. Um, but Fantastic. the short answer is for yes. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> a sway tweet. We I like put that. It in a sway. 
Um, <laughs> the short answer is yes. We'll be sending this out for all attendees. Um, you guys will be getting an email tomorrow with the link to the recording so you can access that and reference it. And then who knows, maybe take a look at the Latero Microsystems Twitter handle. Um, I believe it's at Latero Micro and, and or Sherry's uh, personal Twitter. Um, we'll be, we can likely be sharing out um, a link to a sway there as well. Um, two other questions for you, Sherry. Um, if you had to pick, uh, this one's from Bruce. If you had to pick a most important or relevant feature that you've shared today, what would be the one you'd be most excited about? I would, I would actually say not the, not so much the functionality, but rather the combination of these new tools, Steve, to the, to, to the context, which is storytelling and making a point and selling a change and being the hero uh, who wants to make some kind of transformation. I think coupling that with these new tools is the real power of the whole thing. Um, is there a specific feature I like a lot? I want to say it, it would be basically the absence of all the frustration trying to make things look good. I, yeah. you, you saw me take a slide from really boring to something consumable in seconds. And the absence of me having to do that, that's my favorite part. Yeah. And you said the key word there in seconds, right? It gets us all back to what we need to be working on most, which is being productive, providing back to value to clients. So um, that's an excellent. Very discussion. powerful. And then I think the combination of Sway making it more multimedia and consumable in so many ways, um, you know, again, it's just, it's the better together concept also. Love it. Um, let's see. Um, can we use corporate templates in Sway? This one comes from Laura. So the corporate templates in Sway, yeah, actually. Oh, oh, the the HTML template. Hmm. Or, or maybe even the, it was a secondary question. It was they might be referring to company templates, so you can make sure that it's branded I, I appropriately. So what I imported, by the way, was I imported from our marketing template PowerPoint file. But I think what she is asking is this customize. Um, you are able now to uh, add your custom palettes of colors. This was not something that was in Sway at the beginning. The other problem was we didn't have any way to control font and point size, which made it really hard for those of us who have, you know, shall we call it some design preferences. Uh, but you can do all of that now. Now, will it come as close to an HTML site template as you enjoy maybe in your web pages? I don't know. I think that Sway has some restrictions. It has a, an objective to make it easy uh, so you don't have as much customization as you'd like. But now the fact that you can add your custom, uh, custom curated colors, et cetera, those are things that are very, very good. Very handy. Let's see. And then uh, one other for right now. Let's, this comes from Kelly. Um, she asked about are there analytics um, available or built into the Sway oh. platform so you can see how it's being interacted with? Absolutely. So Sway has now added analytics for who's viewing uh, things. And by the way, what I want to show you is I went into kind of what's new uh, in any one of the applications. And I did want to tell you that a couple of these uh, articles here, sorry, I'm going to get to the right page here. This will be in the resources page of the slide deck, by the way. There's what's new in PowerPoint, but there was recently an announce. Oh, yes, here we go. Uh, hold on, I'm almost there. So this right here is a, a fabulous page for any Office application, but also what it does is it tells you what the Office insiders are getting when they get it. So even if you're not signed up for it, you can see what's in the Office uh, Insiders queue. Now, this was just in uh, PowerPoint, but let's take a look on this link. This is such a fabulous resource. It tells you precisely what's in it. And one of the recent announcements about Sway is that there are analytics about who watches what uh, within your Office 365 environment. So it's very exciting. Excellent. And I know we're right at the top of the hour, so I just got one more. It should be a quick question for you, Sherry. This one comes from Anne, and she asks, is Sway only available in Office 365 for business? 
That I do not know. I really do not know. Um, I do know that there are mobile app versions for Sway. They've improved the iPad and iOS versions. Uh, I will have to check. Great. Well, Ann, we'll, we'll follow up with you. I'll, I'll work with Sherry, and then we can get you the answer to the question. But uh, that, that's our time, everyone. I want to thank Sherry for an amazing presentation. Uh, thank you to all of you for joining, and we look forward to seeing you on more future webinars. Thanks so much, Sherry. Thank you, Steve. Thank you all for being with us. Bye.